Algebra 1, number 2.10b. We're still talking about number properties and proofs. We're going to talk about theorems and proofs in this video. Now, this one's going to be a little bit longer than my normal videos because I'm packing a lot of information in here before we go on to Chapter 3. So we now know that axioms are number properties that are accepted as true without proof. And number properties that need proof before being accepted as true are called theorems. Theorems need axioms, postulates. That's the same thing as an axiom. So theorems need these axioms and definitions and other theorems to prove they're true. Axioms get us to theorems. They help to prove theorems true. Every equation that can be obtained by using logic and the axioms is called a theorem. A proof is a careful record of the moves made to show a theorem is true. So if you've ever watched a professional chess game, you'll see the players are writing down their moves, and you would be able to follow their logic throughout the game, seeing each move going to the next move that got them to their win, okay? All right, so remember to check this video's description for links to similar and helpful videos. I talk a lot about the properties in here, so I'm going to have links to all of those in there, okay? So we've talked about the distributive property before. Here's a distributive property theorem for any rational numbers, a, b, and c. b plus c inside parentheses with a on the outside of the parentheses is going to equal b, a plus c, a, because it gets distributed. That a gets distributed to the b and the c with the plus sign in the middle, right? This is basically the distributive property, isn't it? Well, to prove this theorem, we write a sequence, a list of statements. Each statement must be supported by a reason. And that can be an axiom, you know, a property or a definition. So let's prove this. Let's turn this distributive property theorem into an axiom, into something that is proven that doesn't need to be proven anymore. It's true, okay? So I make a table, all right? And I'm going to number 1, 2, 3, 4 on this side. And sometimes it could have 12. Sometimes times it could just be 2 or 3. It depends on how many statements you need and how many reasons you need to get your proof, okay? And I put the same number on this side, and I write statements on the left and reasons on the right in the headings. And let's look at this first one. Now remember, we're trying to prove that B plus C in parentheses with the A out here is equal to the B A plus C A. That's our goal, okay? So we're going to say that the B plus C in parentheses with the A on the outside is equal to this, isn't it? the A on the outside with the B plus C. So the A just moved to the front, didn't it? Well, that's the commutative property of multiplication that says we can do that. That's the reason we can do that. It says that we can change the order, right? So that's our proof that we can do that. Then our statement is taking this A on the outside in the front with the B plus C, and we move it down here, see? So now we move that to here, and we say, well, if we've got this, it's also equal to AB plus AC, right? Because of the distributive property says we can multiply AB plus AC, right? So now we've proven that it could be this, see? So now this gets moved to here, and we say this is equal to this, AB plus AC is equal to BA plus CA, because the commutative property of multiplication says that we can change the order, right? So now we're here at BA plus CA. Now, we say B plus C, in parentheses with the A in the back, is equal to BA plus CA. See, we got from here to here. See, it's the same thing. This is the same thing as this. See? And if you look, that is what we were trying to prove, that B plus C with A on the outside is BA plus CA. See? So we got there. And our reasoning is the transitive property of equality says we can swap it if it's equal. So it's saying that we have now gotten to this statement because this is equal to this, this is equal to this, see? So here it is in a nutshell. Okay, and I'll back up a little bit. It says if this underlined orange part, B plus C in parentheses with the A, is equal to that by switching it around from commutative property, and if this A in the front now that we had 
with the b plus c in the parentheses is equal to this from the distributive property and if this from the distributive property is equal to this because of the commutative property, then this is equal to that, see? So we did if this is this and this is this, then that is that, see? That's pretty much what we're doing. Now, we do many of these proofs in geometry. So we're just touching on this a little bit. We're not going to do any more of these. I've got a couple more examples, yes, but after this we're going into chapter 3 with equations. This is giving you a taste, okay? So the best thing you could do, make a note sheet of all the properties and their meanings so you can use it as a guide, right? So you can reflect on it really quickly. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We've got the distributive property theorem with three add-ins. So now we've got A, B, C, and D. So we're going to distribute A to B, A to C, and A to D, see? And we need to prove that this is true, all right? So here's what we're going to do. Let's prove it. We're going to start with this statement, okay? And this is actually called the given. In geometry, this is called the given, and it'll have like a little colon right here, and then that will be written after the word given. So that's, it's like it's handed to you, okay? It's just given to you. All right, so we've got this statement that we can distribute A to the inside of the parentheses and get this, okay? So we write that and we put it inside parentheses and brackets because the associative property of addition says we could change the grouping. We don't need to have them all grouped together in one. We could group the B and C together and then do the D, see? And have it separated. And because A is being multiplied to them, that's why we have the bracket there to keep the D separate from it and to let everyone know we're multiplying, all right? But the associative property of addition says that we can change the grouping, okay? So that's what we did. So now this becomes this. We've got this parentheses bracket grouping with the A on the outside, and we can say because of the distributive property that it'll equal this. This is equal to A times B plus C times AD. See? We put the A times the D in the back there. See? Distributive property says we can do that. Okay? We're going to distribute the A. So now this moves down here, and we say since we have this, it can equal this because we now distribute the A to the B and the A to the C, and now we get AB plus AC equal plus AD. And that's the distributive property. We've now distributed the A to the B and the C. We did it up here to the D. Now we're doing it to the A and the C. So now we, we're here. Now we can take this and say, because of the transitive property, which is you can swap things if they're equal, that this is now equal to this. Because if this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, and it's equal to this, and this is equal, then it's got to be equal to that. If these are all equal to each other, then that is equal to that. That's what the transitive property is saying. And if you look, that's exactly what the distributive property theorem was saying. So we've proven, sometimes people say proved, that it's true. All right? We got one last one. This is the identity property of multiplication. You remember the identity property. In addition, you can add a zero, and in multiplication, you can multiply it by one, and it keeps its identity, right? Now look at, this one's got eight steps, so whew, bear with me, all right? So the identity property of multiplication says, A, if you've got a rational number A, and you do A times zero, it's going to be zero, right? That's the identity property of multiplication. Okay, let's prove this. So our statement is our given, okay? So that's our given. A times 0 is going to equal A times 0 plus 0. Well, that's the additive identity. If you add a 0, it keeps its identity, right? Now, this gets moved over here to number 2, and we say if A times 0 plus 0, then that'll equal A times 0 plus A plus negative A. And this underlined part right here is the additive inverse. If you add something and you subtract the same thing, opposites are going to equal zero, right? So that's going to get us to here, a times zero plus a plus negative a. All right, that's what was up here. We moved it here. And this can become this, a times zero plus a 
times 1. So we're going to stick in a times 1 plus negative a, and that's the multiplicative identity. Multiplying by 1 lets it keep its identity, okay? This gets moved down to here to number 4. Now we can say this whole 0 plus a times 1 can be put like this because of the distributive property. We can say a times 0, a times a, a times 1, see? And a times 1 is 1, so we just have a times 0 plus 1, see? This whole 0 plus a times 1 becomes 0 plus 1 because of the distributive property, and we tack on this negative a in the back here that we're adding, see? So now this gets moved down here, okay? And it becomes this, because a times 0 plus 1 is a times 1, isn't it? So it becomes this. We moved it down to here, and this a times 0 plus 1 becomes a times 1. And then we just drop down our plus negative a. Now this gets moved to here, and a times 1 plus negative a is the same thing as a plus negative a, because we don't need to write that 1, right? That's our buddy that can turn into the invisible 1. So basically, we just have a plus negative a. We move it down here, a plus a negative a. That's the additive inverses. The opposites equal 0, and it equals 0. And this, the transitive property of equality, it says swap if it's equal, says that this a times 0 if it's equal to this, and this is 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 equal to this, and they're all equal to each other, and they equal zero, then that guy equals zero. That first guy equals zero. And that's what we were trying to prove. We were trying to prove that a times zero equals zero. a times zero equals zero. So what we did was a methodical step each way proving and we got that one to equal this last one, okay? So remember, make a note sheet of all the properties and their meanings, okay? And put in the ABC meanings so that you can see the addition, multiplication, and parentheses and everything, and put in little things like this, like add zero keeps identity or opposites equal zero. Little terms like that are going to help you remember what they are, and then that way when you're doing a proof, you can reflect back on that note sheet very quickly. I used to put these in the back cover of my spiral, of my car of the cardboard cover, and I could reflect on it really quickly. And when I used the five star spirals with the pockets inside, I'd write it on the pockets. And then I could flip to them really quick and say, what was that property again? What was the inverse one? And I'd be able to flip to it real quick, okay? So you want to write down your properties of equalities, and you want to write down those six axioms field axioms that we talked about in the previous videos, okay? And there'll be links to all of these in this description, okay? So I hope this was helpful. We're going to move on to chapter 3 now, which talks about equations, and the first one we're going to do, 3.1a, is going to be about addition property of equality, all right? I'll see you there. Bye.